Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer Jackson. I'm a registered nurse and an assistant professor in the Faculty of Nursing at the University of Calgary. And this video is about how to use Bloom's taxonomy to maximize your essay writing. So I'm going to use examples from nursing, but this can apply to anybody who's writing papers in higher education. So what is Bloom's taxonomy? Bloom's taxonomy is a way of categorizing different ways of thinking. So understanding different processes that go on in your head while you are thinking. And this is a guide to demonstrate that like some kinds of these processes are more advanced than others. So I will show you what I'm talking about. So here is Bloom's taxonomy. If you Google image search that or use whatever search engine you want, you will find tons of examples. So this is one example that I've pulled off the internet, but there are tons that have lots of different words that can help you understand different ways of applying concepts. So in a very brief overview, Bloom and colleagues, when they were developing this taxonomy in the 1950s, there was a recognition that some things you do with your brain are harder than others. So they created this classification system, starting with describing, then going to understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. And this process drives from uh, left to right, at least on my screen, and so um, the point is to say that evaluating something or creating something new, that is harder to do than describe and understand. Now that's not to say describing and understanding are not hard. It's that creating and evaluating are more difficult. So this isn't a way of saying, well, if you do this, you're worse or better than someone who can do that. This is just a general way of understanding what different skills we have when it comes to our thinking and how we can apply these different skills in different contexts. So when you are writing for higher education, if you are at the PhD level, you need to be here evaluating and creating something new. Master's level, you need to be analyzing and evaluating. And then undergraduate level, you are gonna be in the describing, understanding and applying, maybe the analyzing categories, okay? So don't feel like creating is the, is the best outcome for everyone. We expect different types of skills when we have um, different levels of education and engagement and knowledge creation. So one of the most important things that you can do with this taxonomy is understand what your tutors or your instructors are asking for so that, that you give them exactly what they want. So an example of this might be if you've ever submitted assignments and they say you did not, you didn't read the question. Often what's happening is you didn't get the question, like your response did not match what they were asking for. So how do you figure this out? I think the easiest way is to look and say what words are in the question that I have been given. So for example, if you have been asked to discuss something in your assignment, you can look for the word discuss and find, okay, it's under understanding. This is where I need to put my writing. This is the idea that I need to meet. Now, how do you do that? You can use other words from the same column in your work. So for example, you might say, um, these two ideas are related, sorry, related by the fact that they all apply to complex healthcare systems or that they all reflect adult needs in intensive care. You might say, you can compare different aspects of uh, this policy by looking at how it's applied nationally and how it's applied provincially. So those are some examples of how you can use these classifications 
to make sure you are writing at the right level. So find the word that, use, that is used or find something very similar to it that is used in your assignment and then make sure your assignment includes the types of words that are in that category. So one of the biggest mistakes that I see that sinks students' marks is they're asked to apply or analyze, and what they do is describe and demonstrate understanding. So by using the chart, you can make sure that you're pitching your writing at the right level, and you are demonstrating what is expected of you. Now you can also use Bloom's taxonomy in your writing in a paragraph to paragraph style. So you might start your paragraph by defining what is um, hemodialysis. So you provide a definition of hemodialysis. Then you can explain what hemodialysis is in a practical sense and how you move from the definition to what it looks like in practice. Then you can apply the, the ideas behind uh, hemodialysis to a specific patient case. Then finally, you could compare that patient case to another one and demonstrate analysis of why those two are different. Okay, so you can do this across an essay. So generally, you can work from description to analysis, and also you can do this paragraph to paragraph. So that might not be a technique that always fits with what you've been asked to do, but those are general strategies that you can use to really make Bloom's taxonomy work for you. It can also help you to make sure you're saying, I'm not just using the word show over and over and over again, like this shows, that shows. Find other words that fit in that same type of um, work that you want to demonstrate and then apply that to your assignments. So I'll give you a brief example. So this is a rubric from an assignment in my course. And what I have done is specifically labeled these categories. Sorry, highlight doesn't want to work here. There we go. I have specifically labeled that in my rubric, excellent demonstrates analysis. And so if I was going to mark something that was excellent, I would expect the student to be writing using these verbs because this is the level of thinking that I want them to present for an, to get an excellent in my assignment. And then further, I have said good will show application, satisfactory will show comprehension, and if you do not meet the requirements of the assignment, all you're doing is describing. Now, this does not mean that there is no description in your assignment. What it means is you're using an appropriate amount of description to enable analysis or to enable application. So you might need to provide definitions in your assignment or you might need to provide like a brief overview of um, a policy about um, pharmacare, for example. So you can describe that. It's fine to have description in the paper, but if your whole paper is description, you haven't moved from that description level up to the analysis level. And one other thing. So, oh, sorry, with the rubrics, your instructors might not have put these words in their rubrics, um, but you can still use Plume's taxonomy to understand the rubric. So you can say, this example is clearly identified. Impact of context is clearly analyzed. So look at the types of words that you're seeing in, say, the excellent column of your rubric. Then you look at your Bloom's taxonomy and say, analyze. Okay, I know I need, if to get the highest mark, what they want is this type of thinking, and I can demonstrate that by using these types of words in my writing. 
So I hope that helps and that that can provide some information. Bloom's taxonomy is a hugely useful tool and there's lots of different versions of it. So I suggest just image search Bloom's taxonomy, find something that works for you, and hopefully you can use those techniques to improve your writing and get better grades.